Hello, my name's Sue Nelson and I'm a science and space journalist. I work in radio, TV, podcasts and also writing print online and also books, which is why I've not so subtly got a copy of my book up there, which is Wally Funk's Race for Space. And in fact, Wally and I were at the National Space Centre last year, 2019, um, actually telling the story, Wally's story, of the Mercury 13, the women that passed the same astronaut tests as the Mercury 7, but never quite made it into space. And I know the Space Centre has a lovely little exhibit for these women, so um, they're very close to my heart. Now, in terms of being a journalist, my route was via a science degree, but I know people have become space journalists or specialists without necessarily having a degree in the subject. So that's not, you know, always a given. Um, but it's definitely helped me. My degree was in science, uh, was in physics, actually. It was physics. And I went from physics to the BBC as a sound engineer. Uh, they call it a studio manager. Basically, what you do is you are working behind the scenes in a radio studio, operating all the equipment. And it wasn't the job for me. So lesson number one, if you don't get it right first time, don't worry about it. It all works out in, in the end. So I sort of realised after a couple of years, this was not the right job for me because I was much more interested in what the producer was doing, what the reporter was doing, what the presenter was doing than the sound quality, which made me a probably a lousy studio manager, but it did set a little light bulb in my head going and I decided to resign and become a journalist and my aim for doing this was to do a postgraduate degree. That's why I thought, right, I will do that, learn the trade and then change career and become a, a journalist. I'd always loved writing, so I'd written for a student magazine um, which was really helpful. I'd volunteered um, and got certain little pieces published that were book reviews or little ideas and things like that. So that was always there, a little hint that it would be the right career for me. And also as somebody who now broadcasts for a living, again, the signs were there. I'd always been interested in writing, in drama, and performance so and it, it is effectively if you're particularly if you're a broadcast journalist it is a lot of it is about performance so i do radio tv and print um and the best thing about the job in terms of of, of what you do is it's varied it's no day is ever the same you get to meet so many interesting people the scientists the engineers behind the missions you have to then learn about the science in terms of understanding what different missions are doing um you also i like people i like talking to people and so it's a very good job if you want to be a broadcast journalist because you get to go and meet them and see behind the scenes whether it's in the hangar at virgin galactic in california or spaceport america in uh, New Mexico, where the commercial space flight hopefully is, is all going to take off fairly soon. I've interviewed Buzz Aldrin. I've interviewed, well, I've actually been on a replica moon buggy with Gene Cernan outside the uh, Science Museum. I've had Tim Peake, uh, um, Helen Sharman. You get to meet some great, really interesting people. But then it's not just about that sort of blingy bit of it. It involves your brain too, because you're having to absorb all that information, learn new information, and then package it in a way that people understand whether it's the science or the mission or the politics or the history as well. And particularly making radio documentaries is great for that aspect of it, because you can really go into detail, whether it's, I did a, a documentary recently called Hey Sisters, So Sisters, uh, about the seamstresses involved from the first Apollo missions to today, or as in Wally Funk with the history uh, of the Mercury 13. And that was what was so great about coming with Wally to the National Space Centre too, when she did the um, book tour in the UK, was that you really got to see how space inspires people. People love it. It gets them into STEM, into filmmaking, and documentary making, making podcasts. And so that's great. So my advice would be don't worry if you're not 100% sure, you can find your way there eventually. Um, enjoy talking to people, but enjoy listening to people. 
doesn't work if you don't listen as well. Be a stickler for detail. You have to know your facts, make sure that they're right, correct, go over. The best writing, as they say, is rewriting, and that's definitely true. And you can never be over-prepared. And if you really want to be a journalist like me, I know these are tough times, but be a multimedia journalist if you can, because by doing all those different media, you A, get to do lots of different things, whether it's making short films for the European Space Agency, which I do on missions, or the James Webb Space Telescope, or podcasts, or audio, what have you. But that way, it means that you will always have a good area of work to, to fall into. So yeah, be a space journalist. It is a brilliant, brilliant job.